2017 was a remarkable year for airline safety. It was a year of record passenger numbers and was also widely accepted as the safest year ever for aviation. There were just two fatal accidents in aircraft over 5,700 kilos, with a total of 13 lives lost. The chances of being in a fatal air crash in 2017 were less than 1 in 16 million. However, on the 31st of December, all of this would change for a family of five along with their experienced pilot. Tragedy would occur as they had celebrated New Year's Eve on the famous Sydney Harbour. At approximately 3pm local time on the 31st of December 2017, a DHC-2 Beaver seaplane taxied to depart from Cottage Point, a popular tourist destination on the Hawkesbury River, north of Sydney. On board was a British family of five, as well as a Canadian-Australian pilot, Gareth Morgan. He had over 10,000 flight hours, the majority of which on float planes. The family had been dropped down to Cottage Point by the same pilot earlier in the day. They enjoyed a lunch on the Hawkesbury as their pilot operated two more return flights to Cottage Point before he returned to fly the five tourists back to Rose Bay, in the heart of Sydney Harbour. The family member occupying the front seat was busy taking photos as the pilot taxied the iconic Beaver seaplane for departure. It was a clear summer's day with little turbulence, the wind fairly light with occasional gusts. The aircraft departed to the northwest and all seemed well. However, less than two minutes later, it entered a sharp dive and struck the water in the nearby Jerusalem Bay killing all six people on board. Witness statements explained that the airplane had entered Jerusalem Bay at low altitude, with the engine sounding constant and normal. The crash occurred on a fairly popular area of the Hawkesbury River, so the aircraft wreckage was recovered fairly quickly, on the 4th of January. While this confirmed that the airplane was intact as it hit the water, the wings and floats had become dislodged due to the impact forces indicating that the pilot did not have control in the final moments of the flight. The DHC-2 Beaver operated by Sydney Seaplanes did not and was not required to carry either a cockpit voice recorder or a cockpit data recorder. Therefore, investigators were to rely heavily on witness statements as well as photos taken by the occupants of the aeroplane in order to establish what the cause of the tragedy was. Photos taken by the front seat passenger allowed investigators to reconstruct part of the flight path of the seaplane. They used a police helicopter to reenact the flight by matching the focal length and aperture setting of the camera, thus allowing part of the aircraft's path to be plotted. This showed that the aircraft most likely took off and made a right-hand turn to depart as normal, before turning further right and tracking erroneously into Jerusalem Bay. Documentation set out by Sydney Seaplanes shows that the recommended departure track for pilots was to turn right, following the river. Aircraft would climb as they passed Cowan Point, and once at a safe height above terrain, would turn south to set course for Sydney Harbour. Jerusalem Bay was seen as too narrow with too steep of a terrain gradient to assure a safe departure. So how did an experienced pilot who had flown this route hundreds of times, including twice on the day of the accident, make such a blatant mistake, directing the aircraft into a no-go area? Gareth Morgan had over 10,000 flight hours and was highly experienced on seaplanes. During his career, he had experience in a variety of float plane equipped Cessnas, as well as de Havilland Beavers and Twin Otters. His career had commenced overseas with various stints in Australia, last returning earlier in 2017. Morgan had passed all required training and checking from Sydney seaplanes, and according to their estimates, had operated at least 780 flights to and from Cottage Point. Contacts of Morgan reported that he had a healthy lifestyle and took his work seriously and by all reports seemed happy and upbeat earlier in the day, including in the morning when he phoned a long-term friend in Canada, who he discussed future personal and career plans with. Several theories were surmised by news outlets in order to explain the events which led to the crash of November Oscar Oscar. The Australian widely speculated that the pilot may have been interfered with by one of the passengers, possibly knocked unconscious as they moved around to take photos. While there was little evidence to support this claim, what was clear was that something had impaired or incapacitated Morgan's judgement, leading him to mistakenly turn into Jerusalem Bay. A significant development was uncovered on the 3rd of July 2020, as the ATSB released an update on their investigation. 
Toxicology results indicated that carbon monoxide levels were raised in the pilot and two of the passengers. Carbon monoxide is a colourless, odourless and tasteless gas which if inhaled can lead to headache, confusion and even loss of consciousness. It is often seen as a hazard in aviation due to its strong presence in exhaust gases. The ATSB stated that the level of carbon monoxide was likely to have adversely affected the pilot's control of the aircraft. A thorough examination of the aircraft wreckage was once again carried out, and a possible source of carbon monoxide was found. A pre-existing crack in the engine exhaust collector ring, as well as missing bolts from the firewall were discovered. This would have allowed for a slight but constant flow of carbon monoxide into the cabin. Enough to effectively incapacitate the pilot as he departed with the family of five in the back, initially turning right, but strongly affected by the toxic gas, continuing into Jerusalem Bay, thence losing control of the aircraft and plummeting into the 14 metre deep water. The ATSB released its report today, the 29th of January, stating that the elevated levels of carbon monoxide very likely contributed to the crash, with the 27 minute taxi exacerbating the pilot's elevated level of carbon monoxide. It also stated that a major safety factor in this crash was that there was no regulatory requirement to carry an active carbon monoxide detector. The disposable detector of VH November Oscar Oscar was likely not effective due to sun bleaching. The dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning are set out by the US's Federal Aviation Administration. Formed by incomplete combustion of carbon containing materials in piston engine aircraft, the FAA states that carbon monoxide contributes to 0.5 to 2% of fatal accidents. Even low measurements of carbon monoxide can lead to adverse effects, with exposure over a long period of time leading to worsening of symptoms. Exhaust systems are the most hazardous, with up to 70% of them capable of creating a carbon monoxide hazard. There are two main ways that the risk of carbon monoxide hazards can be reduced. The first is effective maintenance. The ATSB reminded the aviation community of this as they released Safety Advisory Notice 2017-118, concluding, The ATSB reminds maintainers of the importance of conducting detailed inspections of exhaust systems and firewalls, with consideration for potential carbon monoxide exposure. The second is the use of various carbon monoxide detectors. While disposable CO detectors are commonly used in GA aircraft, they have drawbacks including a limited shelf life and proneness to direct sunlight, cleaning chemicals, and halogens. They are a passive device which completely rely on regular monitoring by the pilot. A more effective solution which is becoming significantly cheaper in the modern day is the electronic active CO detector, a number of models of which are available on the market, most of which work by continuously monitoring carbon monoxide levels and have the ability to alert the pilot once they increase above a dangerous level. Sydney seaplanes continue to operate the DHC-2 Beaver today. Following the accident, all pilots completed a refresher course on underwater escape training. All their aircraft are now equipped with GPS tracking devices providing real-time position information and flight data. In response to the accident, all Sydney seaplanes operations were halted immediately only resuming once thorough mechanical inspections of their aircraft had been completed, as well as testing of fuel for contamination. The company can only be commended for their response to the tragedy. Carbon monoxide will continue to be an issue for as long as piston engines are utilised in general aviation. However, with heightened vigilance and the use of electronic CO detectors, the risk can be reduced. Any further disasters involving pilot incapacitation due to carbon monoxide can and should be avoided.